living is risen and alive forevermore. Thank you, Jesus, for another resurrection morning. Receive a thanks in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let the resurrection power be made manifest in our midst today. Amen. We write the story of everyone that looks up to you today. Amen. Open up the graves of everyone being oppressed of the devil. Amen. And thank you for this. You, in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Once again, happy resurrection celebration to all winners worldwide. Amen. Amen. Congratulations for another resurrection celebration service in your life. Amen. Help me congratulate your neighbors to your right and to your left. Jesus is Lord. Give the Lord a big hand and be seated. A songwriter wrote and said, It's no longer here, it's risen. Go tell it everywhere. That's the reason we live. I want also to start by recognizing that um, resurrection is the greatest of all celebrations in Christendom. That is what establishes the values of redemption. The fact that Jesus is alive is the anchor of our faith. This morning I'll be sharing with us on what I've captioned unveiling the blessings that the resurrection of Christ offers. Something about us in the kingdom is that you can only assess what is revealed. The secret things belong to God but the things that are revealed they belong to us. And to our seed after us. Deuteronomy chapter 29. And verse 29. Until they are revealed. They do not belong. As far as our eyes can see. It's only what we are entitled to, to be given. So what we cannot see. We cannot take delivery of. Genesis chapter 13. Verse 14 and 15. That's why next to salvation, revelation is the greatest asset of the redeemed of the Lord. He said in Hosea chapter 4 verse 6, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. They are my people, but they are destroyed for lack of knowledge. In Isaiah chapter 5 and verse 13, he said, my people are gone into captivity because they have no knowledge. In Proverbs 21 verse 16, a man that wanders away, wandered out of the way of understanding, shall remain in the congregation of the dead. That means lack of spiritual understanding will make a believer suffer what the unbelievers suffer. Because he does not know. But you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. You shall know the truth. John 8, 32, and the truth shall make you free. Let's look at some of these offers of resurrection in specifics. Don't forget the anchor scripture. Let me let you have the anchor scripture. Revelation chapter 1 and verse 18. Jesus speaking said, I'm he that liveth and was dead and behold I'm alive forevermore amen and have 
the keys of hell and of death. That means I'm in charge. I'm in control. I'm in command. He came and said, when he rose from the dead, all powers in heaven and on earth is given unto me. All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. What is it that makes resurrection a great celebration? Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 8. Wherefore he said, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. So it's a celebration of distribution of gifts. It's a rescue of mankind from all forms of captivities. It is what gives the redeemed their place in life and destiny. You know, the gift of a man maketh room for him and brings him before great men. And brings him before great men. He ascended up on high, led captivity captive, and gave gifts unto men. And gave gifts unto men. And gave gifts unto men. They brought spices to the sepulchre. They didn't meet him there. He wasn't there to collect anything from them. He went up there to deliver gifts unto men. You are returning with your gifts today. You are returning with your resurrection gifts today. In the name of Jesus. Let's jump quickly. In Revelation chapter 5, verse 9, all the way to 12, they sang a new song saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seas thereof, for thou wast slain, and as we did us unto our God, by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. No racial discrimination. Same price paid for all men from all races, from all tribes, from all nations. And as redeemed us unto our gods as priests and kings, and we shall reign on the earth. And I beheld and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne, and the beasts and the elders, and the number of them was ten thousand times ten thousand and thousands of thousands, saying what? With a loud voice. What is the lamb that was slain? Ascended up on high. And received the following gifts for us. Power. And riches. And wisdom. And strength. And honor. And glory. And blessing. Now that's what makes resurrection. The great celebration. Amen. Amen. It is about the restoration of human dignity both in the now and in eternity. The restoration of human dignity that was lost in Adam to sin was restored back to us as the gifts of resurrection after Jesus ascended up to heaven. Amen. So power that establishes man's dominion on the earth is restored. All power in heaven and on earth has been given. Go ye therefore. No devil stops you. All powers. Go ye therefore and teach all nations that all powers is now in my hand.
riches, he was made poor that we, he became poor that we through his poverty might be made rich. Amen. And wisdom, it is by wisdom that kings reign. So, if he has redeemed us to reign, then he has endowed us with the gift of wisdom to match. Strength himself took our infirmity and bore our sicknesses upon the cross. By his stripes we were healed. And then honor and the reproach of his people shall he take away from all the earth. Isaiah 25 and verse 6 to 8. And in this mountain shall the Lord of hosts make unto all people a feast of our things, a feast of Wine is on the leaves of fat things full of marrow of wine on the leaves where they find. And he will destroy in this mountain the face of the covering cast over all people and the veil that is spread over all nations. That's what happens when the veil in the temple is turned into twin. And he will swallow up death in victory. He did that at his resurrection. And the Lord God will wipe away tears from off all faces. And the reproach of his people shall he take away from off all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. The Lord has spoken it. Can I hear your amen? amen? So it's the great celebration of gifts. Everything that pertains to life and godliness is contained in that sevenfold redemptive package. What are you looking for? Power. What is mankind looking for? Riches. What's he looking for? Wisdom. What's he looking for? Health and vitality. What's he looking for? Honor. What's he looking for? Glory. What's he after? Blessings. Now, everything that pertains to life and godliness is covered by the gifts of resurrection. We also discover the following offers of his resurrection. One, resurrection is what establishes the credibility of our faith. First Corinthians 15 and verse 17. And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain, and ye are yet in your sins. Resurrection establishes the credibility of our faith. Number two, resurrection establishes the just our justification from sin. Romans 4, 22 to 23. Therefore it was imputed to him for righteousness. Now it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him. But for us also, to whom it shall be, to whom it shall be imputed, if we believe on him that raised up Jesus, our Lord, from the dead. So we are justified by his resurrection as if we never sinned. The Bible records that it's raised up for our justification. So it is by his resurrection that we are seen justified before God. In Psalm 32, verse 1 to 2, Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. 
Blessed is the man unto whom God imputed not iniquity and in whose spirit he cannot find a guy. That's prophetic about us in redemption. Our sins are covered. Our iniquities are taken away. In Psalm 130 and verse 3 and 4, If thou, Lord, shouldest mark iniquities, O Lord, who shall stand? But there is forgiveness with you, that thou mayest be feared. So his resurrection is ordained for our justification. His resurrection is our justification before God. He was raised up for our justification. That's where our justification is rooted. That's the anchor. He said, who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. It's the same Romans 4. Just read forward in 25. Raised up for our justification. So before God, all of us that are saved are sin, are sinless. Justified by God. Number three, resurrection establishes our membership of the house of God. The household of God. Our membership of the household of God. Ephesians 2 and verse 19. The Bible said, Now therefore ye are no more strangers but, and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. What a honor. But in Hebrews chapter 2, we read, Verse 10 and 11. For it became him for whom are all things and by whom are all things in bringing many sons unto glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings. For both he that sanctified and he that is sanctified are all one for which cause is not ashamed to call them brethren. So we have become members of God's household Heirs of God and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. Heirs of God. So it's not a shame to call us brethren. Romans 8 and verse 17. And if children then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with them that we may also be glorified together. So we are now heirs of God and joint heirs with, God, with Christ. We are now members of his household. And what a honor. What is it that belongs to members of his own household? For the Lord has chosen Zion. Psalm 132 verse 13. He has desired it for his habitation. This is my rest forever. And here will I dwell for I have desired it. I will abundantly bless her provision. And I will satisfy her poor with bread. I will also clothe her priest with salvation. And, all, and our saints shall shout aloud for joy. It's a winning family. The winning side is always the shouting side. The winning side is always the shouting side. The winning side is always the shouting side. That's the blessedness of being members of his household. You are always shouting for joy. You are always shouting the shout of triumph in every battle. You are ever on the winning side. Hallelujah. In Psalm 65 and verse 4, it says, Blessed is the man whom thou choosest, whom thou causest to approach unto thee, that they may dwell in thy court as members of your family. We shall be satisfied with the goodness of thy house, even of thy holy temple. His house is a house of goodness. And he satisfies members of his household with his goodness. Hallelujah. 
Number four, resurrection establishes our open access to revelation of the truth. Open access to the revelation of the truth. When he yielded up the ghost, Matthew 27, 50 to 53, the veil in the temple was torn into twain, providing open access to every redeemed of the Lord and to the holiest of all, where we have manna in the golden pot. Amen. Everything is golden. And Aaron wrote that burden. And the tables of the covenant. Revelation. You, you can't assess the Holy of Holies without blood. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 4. And when you get in there, you assess the tables of the covenant. The revelations of what to do to assess the provisions God has made. That's the tables of covenant. Can I hear your Amen. amen. Everything in the holiest of all leaves, including the dry rod of Aaron. And when he rose from the dead, the Bible said, then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. Luke 24, verse 45. Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. So it is by the power of his resurrection that we gain access into the deep things of God. Can I hear your amen? amen? And arise and shine, your light is come. And by that light, a little one shall become a thousand. And a small one, a strong nation. I, the Lord, will hasten it in his time. That is why next to salvation, the greatest asset of a believer is revelation. Because every revelation is revolutionary in nature. Every revelation steers a supernatural turnaround. Every true revelation steers a supernatural turn around. Every true revelation. Arise, shine, your light is come. The glory of the Lord is written upon thee. Darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people, but the Lord shall arise upon thee. The Gentiles will come unto thy light and their kings to the brightness of your rising. And um, verse 8, who are these that fly as a cloud? And um, verse 22, a little one shall become a thousand, and a small one a strong nation. I, the Lord, will hasten it in his time. So, resurrection establishes our open access to the revelation of the truth, to the deep things of God. Number five, revelation quickens our mortal body unto health and vitality. Quickens our mortal bodies unto health and vitality. John chapter 20 and verse 21. Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you. As my father sent me, even so send I you. And when he has said this, he breathed on them and said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Now listen. If the spirit that raised Christ from the dead, Romans 8, 11, dwells in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Hmm. So, resurrection comes along with the quickening power for our mortal bodies. It turns our natural body to spiritual body. We have a natural body. It is sown in nature, a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. There's a natural body. There's a spiritual body. There are bodies terrestrial and there are bodies celestial. Restoration power comes along with the quickening of our mortal body. There are celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial. But the glory of the celestial is one and the glory of the terrestrial is another. There are different levels of glory. May this quickening gift 
come alive in everyone under the sound of my voice today. Yeah. It means the power of resurrection delivers access to divine nature. Access to divine nature that makes us operate in the celestial realm of life. That makes us carry a spiritual body. And that is our immunity against sickness and disease. Against satanic oppressions and afflictions. Therefore, everyone's struggle over sickness and disease Oppressions and afflictions are declared over today. Amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. Number six, resurrection unveils access to God's plan and purpose for our lives. We saw how Jesus appeared to Saul who later became Paul on his way to Damascus Saul saw why persecuted thou me and Saul said who art thou Lord he said I am Jesus the resurrected one whom thou persecutes it is hard for thee to kick against the praise and God's plan and purpose came alive to Saul through that encounter. So the power of his resurrection grants us access to God's plan and purpose for our life. After he got, he rose from the dead, he met Peter. Peter, do you love me? You are meant to be pursuing after lambs, not after fish for making a living. You love me? Go after my sheep. Are you sure you love me? Go after my sheep. That's my plan and purpose for your life. Therefore, in this resurrection season, every air of confusion will be over in everyone's life. Amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. You will assess God's plan amen. and purpose for your life amen. at every stage of your life amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Number seven, resurrection releases believers from all forms of captivities. All forms of captivities. The graves were opened. Yes. And many bodies of the saints which slept arose and came out of the grave after his resurrection. Every form of captivity holding down any aspect of anyone's life, every such grave shall be opened now. Yeah. No aspect of anyone's life under the sound of my voice around the world shall be left in the grave today. Amen. They came out after his resurrection. Very early in the morning rose. So we are in his resurrection state now. We are now in the resurrected state of Christ. And so, everyone must come out of his grave. Amen. You are coming out of your grave today. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Number eight. Resurrection offers peace. That passes all understanding. From John chapter 20. And verse 8 to 21. Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples. That he had seen the Lord. And that he had spoken these things to, unto her. And then the same day at the evening being the first day of the week today. When the doors were shut, where disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus Amen. and stood in their midst. 
and saith unto them, Peace be unto you. When he has said, he has so said, he showed unto them his hands and his side. They were disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you. As my father sent me, so send I you. He was sent as the prince of peace. The one who could afford to be asleep on a pillow in the midst of the storm. As my father has sent me, even so send I you. Peace that passes all human understanding is one of the gifts of resurrection. Peace that passes all human understanding he said prophetically, my peace I give unto you, not as the world. My peace I live with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giver give unto thee. Let not your heart be troubled over anything, and I let it be afraid. Peace that passes any human interpretation. Peace you can't put your finger, where is it coming from? Peace that makes you a replicate of the Prince of Peace. Hallelujah. This is your portion today. Amen. No more tension. Amen. No more stress. Amen. No more upheavals. Amen. No more anxieties. Amen. No more fear. Amen. Nothing can buy peace. Oh. There are troubled business giants that are troubled 24-7. There are highly troubled top political leaders across the nations of the earth. Position come by peace. Power come by peace. When you talk about the peace of God in your life, unbelievers say it can't be true. These people can deceive people. Is there anybody who is not troubled? You mean everybody goes to bed and they just sleep like that? It's not true. They won't tell you what they do. How many are witnesses of the peace of God in their lives? Well, watch for a new dimension of it. In the name of Jesus. Now listen, very important. Resurrection repositions believers for dominion in the race of life. Dominion. Dominion. How? Ephesians 2, 5 to 6. Even when we are dead in sins, as he quickened us together with Christ, by grace he has saved. And now the saved has been raised up together. Are made to seek together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. At redemption, we are raised together with Christ. Are made to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus or with Christ Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. And if you go back to Ephesians 1 and 17. To 21 or 7 to 22. Paul was praying for the Ephesian child that the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him. That the eyes of your understanding may be enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of His calling and how much riches of glory is in your inheritance in Christ. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And what is the exceeding greatness of His power to us all who believe? according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world but also in that which is to come. And has put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things 
to the church. Has put all things under his feet and you are seated together with him in heavenly places or in Christ Jesus. So you are inside the one into whose hand God has put all things Amen. under his feet. So all things are now under your feet. He said the Lord shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. Shortly. Romans 16, 20. So all things including Satan. Hey, listen. All things including Satan are now under your feet. All things including Satan principalities and powers and might and dominion. All things are now under your feet by the gift of resurrection. When he ascended on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Among the great gifts of resurrection is dominion. The gift of dominion. The gift of dominion. Satan is under your feet right now by the gift of dominion that resurrection offers. Satan, come and say with me, Satan is under my feet right now by the gift of dominion that resurrection offers. Satan is under my feet right now. Oh, powers all dominion, all might are now under my feet by the gift of revelation, by the gift of resurrection, by the gift of resurrection, by the gift of resurrection. This thing is real. 1979, I caught this light from the ministry of Smith Wigglesworth. He was already dead. He was in heaven. Amen. But the word of God live it and abide it forever. From that time, no devil threatens my life because I saw me seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus far above the forces that threaten men. Far above the forces that oppress and afflict men. Far above occultic powers. Far above demonic installations. That's where we are all seated. But you only be given as far as your eyes can see. Therefore, I decree the opening up of everyone's spiritual understanding today. Amen. It's not what we pray for, it's what we know. He said, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. That power is manifested by revelation. It's, it's not, Philippians 3.10. Now, it's not something you are praying for is something to discover. It is our discovery of the enormity of this power that defines its manifestations in our life. And that you may know the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe according to the working of his mighty power which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead. It's something to discover. It's not something to cry for. It is your discovery of this truth that empowers you and I to manifest it. You have the free gift of dominion over all principality all powers, all dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. Amen. 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 Lift up your right hand and thank God for the gifts. 
Thank God for the gift of resurrection. Thank God for the gift that resurrection offers you and I. The sevenfold redemptive package of power, of riches, of wisdom, of strength, of honor, of glory, and of blessings. Thank God for the validation of your faith by the power of its resurrection, the credibility of your faith. Thank God for your repositioning for dominion. Would you thank God right now for quickening your mortal body? In the name of Jesus Christ. We should all expect today, this morning, the opening of all our graves. Amen. The graves of frustration and stagnation. Amen. The graves of failure and defeat. Amen. The grave of shame and reproach. The grave of misfortune and enchantment. Amen. Just locked up destinies. Locked down destinies. Expect those graves to be opened this morning. Amen. The grave of generational causes. Amen. The grave of sickness and disease. Amen. And all forms of satanic oppression and afflictions. Are all declared open today in the name of Jesus. Amen. These are literal translation of these graves. So no more stagnation, no more frustration, no more failure, no more defeat, no more shame, no more reproach. The graves are open. The graves are open. You are coming out this morning. The graves are open. You are coming out this morning. The graves are open. Your graves are open. No more sickness, no more disease. Your graves are open. Thank you, Father. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, you remember the first thing Jesus did among others when he came out of the grave was to serve the communion. Yes. Amen. 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 I was in the communion. Preservation of your spirit, soul, and body. Preservation of our spirit, soul, John chapter 6 and verse 48 I am the bread of life. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. This is the bread which came down from heaven that a man may eat thereof and not die. What? I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread he shall live forever. What? And the bread that I will give him is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. And the Jews therefore say, well, can't you see this is eccentric. This is raw madness. How can this man give us his flesh to, to eat? Jesus said unto them, verily I say unto you, except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. Ah. So we don't have life and we're here in you. Whosoever eateth my flesh, let me tell you the kind of life I'm talking about, and look at my blood, hath eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. It's preservation of your spirit, man. For my flesh is made indeed, and my blood is drank indeed. He that eateth my flesh and look at my blood, dwelleth in me. And I in him. Praise God. And Jesus is the wisdom and the power of God. Mm. He dwells in me and I dwell in him. So he replicates the wisdom and the power of God. For as the living father said, and I live by the father. So he that heated me, even he shall live by me. Which means he shall live like me. You have seen me, you have seen my father, John 14, 19. John 14, 9. 
So when you take his flesh and his blood, you are empowered to live like him. Spirit, soul, and body. You are empowered to live like him. Those who take it worthily, they are strong. They live a sickness-free life. And they enjoy longevity. Therefore, this morning at this table, everyone partaking of this special communion service today, the resurrection order of communion, be empowered to live like a spirit, soul, and body. In the name of Jesus, be empowered to live like him. Spirit, soul, and body. In the name of Jesus. Amen. No one will fall off on this journey. Amen. You will make it through to heaven. Amen. We shall meet on the streets of glory. Amen. We shall be shouting hallelujah out there. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Your body shall not know sickness anymore. Amen. Pains and aches shall not be found in you anymore. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And so shall it be. In Jesus name. So put your faith together. There is a raw reenactment of resurrection this morning. Hallelujah. The gifts of resurrection will be manifesting bodily in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. And so shall it be. Lift up your right hand, everybody, and celebrate this resurrected Christ and the many, many gifts he has come down to distribute among us this morning, which he has started already. He has started that already. Some have taken their packages right now. He started that already. He started that already. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Well, we have a very great season ahead of us. The next 40 days shall be the most revolutionary in your life. Acts chapter 1 and verse 3. To whom also Jesus showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs. Being seen of them 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. That's an epistle sent to all of our churches worldwide. And the moment we take that before we proceed in this service. Give the Lord Jesus the biggest resurrection order of clap offering. Clap your hands, all you people. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Amen.